Get yourself energized on the uncompromised Word of God. Yes, sir! Pastor Glenn Curry. Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. It's Miracle Monday, Manifestation Monday. It's time for the Word of God to prove true in our case in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, Pastor Glenn here. Let me read two scripture cards, uh, prosperity cards, and then we're going to get energized on the Word of God. Not that these scripture cards are not the Word of God. That's how I know so many scriptures, is just by reading the cards regularly. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. It is possible to give away and become richer. It is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be rich. By watering others, he waters himself. That's Taylor's translation. Psalm 85, 8, I will hear what the Lord God will speak. He will speak prosperity to his people. That's Rotherham's translation. Proverbs 10, 3, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. The New American Bible says the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. Leviticus 25, verse 19 and 21, and the land shall yield her fruit. Huh, the land is female. The land shall yield her fruit, and you shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety, and I will command my blessing upon you. Wow, the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Uh, Proverbs 10, 22, God's commanding on you. You better receive that in Jesus' name. All right. All of us probably know the verse, uh, at least heard it quoted by somebody, uh, Hebrews 4.16. And the, the, the Bible says, let us come boldly, that means confidently, to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, Right. And so other verses, I just want to give you some verses to show you that God invites us to reason with him, okay? Isaiah 1.18, that's, that's a primary one I think about when I think about this. God said, come, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. He goes on to say what the, the situation was. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the children of Israel had sinned, and God wanted to get them back in fellowship with himself. So he told the people, come now, let us reason together. How, how are they, if they sinned, how are they going to reason? Well, Father, I th- they're going to say God. They didn't know God as Father. But they're going to say s- something like, you've made provision to forgive our sins through sacrifice, and so I apply that now to my sin, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I want my sin, uh, though it be like scarlet in your eyes, I want it to be like white snow in your eyes from now on. Uh, though my sin is like crimson and so red, deep red, I, Father, I just, uh, not Father, but God, I ask you, uh, Elohim, I ask you to make it like wool. Okay, so there's Isaiah 118. Isaiah 41, uh, 21 says, produce your cause. You're trying to have a baby, and it, doesn't, it seems like you're barren. Nothing's happening in your life. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasoning, says the king of Jacob or the king of Israel, because Jacob's name was later changed to Israel, okay? So produce your cause. How do you do that? You find scriptures that promise you what you need, you find scriptures that God uh, that, that reveal what God said about the matter and bring that before him as you come boldly to the throne of grace. In that way, you, find, you obtain mercy and you find the grace to help in time of need. You find your answer. If you're sick, you bring the healing scriptures before God. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. Listen what it says. I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. These watchmen were like he was comparing a soldier on the wall to an intercessor that would pray frequently for 
Jerusalem in that case right there. I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent and give him no rest until he establishes and until he makes Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Suppose you started a new business and you're, you're not violating success principles. You're doing everything you know how to do. You got the advertisement, you got a good product, all that stuff, and you're speaking the word of God, you're walking with God. What do you do? You take Isaiah 62, and instead of saying, Oh, Jerusalem, you say your business. I've said that for pillars of faith for many years. Uh, Father, I thank you that I am a watchman upon your wall. I bring Pillars of Faith Christian Center before you, and I'm not going to hold my peace day or night. I'm going to make mention of the Lord every chance I get. I'm not going to keep silent, but I'm going to give you no rest until you establish Pillars of Faith, or your business, your family name, uh, until you establish the Vosges family and make uh, our family a praise uh, on the earth, something like that, okay? I'm trying to model for you things that other leaders should be modeling for you from the day that you get saved, but it's like uh, it's like the uncle that gets the assignment to teach the, his uh, nephew how to swim. He takes him out in a small boat at, in the lake, throws him over the side, and the kid struggles and almost drowns, but makes it back to the boat. He got, comes back to shore with the kid and said, I taught him how to swim. No, that, that's how most Christian leaders leave, leave the people that they lead to Christ. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to raise up great role models so that you know how it's done and tell others how it's done. Uh, 1 John 2, 1, my little children, these things I have written unto you, that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. An advocate is the one who pleads for another, okay? Another's cause before a judge. It's a legal assistant, an, an intercessor. So you can say, since Jesus is your advocate, Jesus, I need healing, uh, or I need finance, I need favor, whatever it is you need. I need peace. I need my family restored, Jesus. And I ask you to plead my cause before the Father in Jesus' name. Now listen, I hate to tell you any problem I ever have because uh, I know you have your own problems. So I don't tell you any all the junk I'm going through in the attack of the devil. But this is what happened to me. I was walking the other day as I try to always walk like two, three times a week. I try to walk a couple miles uh, because I'm old and I need to get some exercise, right? And I'm a steward, not only of God's money and the people God gave me to pray for and throw a covering over, but I'm also a steward over my own body. Okay. So I can't let myself get weak. So I'm, I walk and I've been doing that for years. So I'm walking and all of a sudden, I have a, this shooting pain in my knee. Now, I live in an area where there's sometimes gunshots, okay? And so I think right in my knee, it's not like, it, it felt like a 22, little tiny 22 bullet just, just hit my knee. So I, I honestly, the first thing I shot, I thought was maybe somebody down the street from where I'm walking, fired a shot, and I'm just an innocent bystander, and I got shot in the knee. So I grabbed my knee, I looked at my pants, or I didn't have my pants on, I had sh uh, shorts on, I looked at my knee, and no blood, just pain. So that was weird. So I go to the doctor, and the doctor sends me to uh, x-ray, and f after a couple of weeks, and so I get an x-ray, and the, the doctor calls me up and says, All you, what it is is you have arthritis in your knee, and suddenly you now your leg is swollen, and you feel uh, this pain. Uh, wow, what? She says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you to a, send you to a specialist to look at that. The specialist was 10 weeks out. It took 10 weeks. So, no, 
no, I got I to gotta do something here. I got to have God help me. So I, what do I do? I get my Strong's Concordance that has every word in the Bible, and I type in the word me, okay? And so this is what I found. Habakkuk 319, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like uh, King James says, hind's feet, like a mountain goat that can climb up uh, the wall of a dam. Their feet are so strong. He makes me walk upon my high places. Okay, he makes me walk. So I looked up knee and walk, I guess. Second Samuel 23, 34 and Psalm 18, 33, they both say the same thing. He makes my feet like hind's feet, mountain goat, sets me on my high places. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Oh, I like that the best. They they shall walk and not faint. So I'm liking that because I'm, I, I, I'm, I wasn't, and I still don't, trust my knee to hold me up. I think I'm going to take a step and fall down because of the shooting pain, okay? When I walk up the stairs, I hold onto the rail and pull myself up, holding on so that if my leg gives out, I won't roll down the stairs. When I go down the stairs or up the stairs, I'm holding on. I don't like that. And I, I, I regret that I'm having to tell you this, but it applies to whatever you're going through, okay? And so this one says, they shall run, so I'm believing that soon I'm going to be running and I'm going to walk and I'm not going to faint or fall down in the name of Jesus. Second Samuel 22, 37 is the same as uh, Psalm 18, 36. And it says, he enlarges my steps under me and my feet do not slip. And Psalm 17, 5 says, he upholds my going in the path and my footsteps slip not. And Psalm 37, 23 says the steps of a good man are ordered or established by the Lord, right? Uh, and Psalm 37, uh, 31 one says none of my steps shall slide. So I'm using the word of God. Amen. And so I looked under the curse and Deuteronomy 28, verse 35 says that to be smitten in the knee and in the leg is under the curse. So now I know that the devil's trying to put something on me that's under the curse. And I encourage you, whatever your problem is, whatever you need from God, do the same thing. Find the word of God that promises you what you need and stick with it. Man, I'm out of time. Saints, I love you so much. Stand with me in prayer, faith, financial support as together we steamroll over the devil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.